All right, everyone, welcome to the Algebra 2 Jungle. This is Bob speaking. Mr. Hill is out today. He's getting Ryan McCann some more dry spaghetti to munch on during class. All right, I'm back. I'm back. Special thank you to Big Bob for filling in while I was gone. And uh, tonight's theme is a very challenging theme. We're going to go over parabolas in, with uh, regards to the definition with focus and directrix. And I hope you can see this picture decent enough. We've, we've got our beautiful parabola here that opens upward. We've got our focus on the interior of the parabola, and we have the directrix on the backside or the exterior of the parabola. Now, the key here is you should be able to pick any point on this parabola, such as this rascal right here. Let's go ahead and we'll mark him. And what you'll see here is that the distance from the focus to that random point is equal to the distance from that point to the directrix, hence the, the notation that I hope you can see in the light gray. Or um, we could pick a different point, another random point, emphasis on the word random, and the distance from the focus to that point is equal to the distance from that point to the directrix. So our formal working definition here today is we are going to say that a parabola is a collection of all the points that are equidistant from the folk between, I probably should say between instead of from, I like the word between better now, between the focus and the directrix. Equidistant, uh, let's see, is a very fun word to say. This means the distance from here to here is equal to the distance from there to there. Real huge point to keep in mind is what is the characteristics of this vertex here? The vertex of the parabola is always halfway between the focus and the directrix. It's always halfway, or we'd say the vertex is the midpoint between the focus and the directrix. Halfway, halfway, halfway. Okay, so I've got a bunch of examples for you tonight, um, and we're going to go ahead and tackle the biggest bear right out of the gates tonight. And I've already imported my graph paper because I think it's so important to sketch these rascals. So in our notebook, I want to emphasize that we are trying to draw pictures and sketch all of these. And I've got the focus at 0, 5 up here, and the directrix is at y equals 1, so I'm going to draw a dotted line here at 1. So I know that the vertex has to be halfway, which would be at 3, and I know it has to open upward in this case because it's got to be kind of open towards the focus but away from the directrix. Okay. Now the next thing I'm going to do <clears throat> is I'm going to pick just any random point here. I'm going to call it A, and because it's random, I need to keep it generic like X, Y. And let's see, we already knew that the focus here was at 0, 5. And then if you start at point A and go straight down, you're going to land right here. And we'll call that F prime. And it has the same X coordinate as point A, but the Y coordinate, because it falls on the line Y equals 1, is guaranteed to be a 1. Now, what I want to do now is I want to find the distance between F and A and then the distance from A to F prime. They should be congruent if my picture was drawn perfectly. It's obviously not quite. Um, and I'm going to set those two distances equal to each other. Now, not a bad idea here. If you're feeling pretty strong with this, to go ahead and try to set this one up all by yourself. It would be a great, great test to let you know where you're at. I'm just going to repeat the distance formula in case anybody forgot this formula. All right, and then I'll talk myself through it, but feel free to try this on your own and then just fast forward to the answer, perhaps. All right, so from F to A, I'm going to do this guy first. I'm going to do X minus 0. Mm -hmm. It's quantity squared plus, and then I'm going to do Y minus 5. And I'm going to set that equal to the distance from A to F prime. And I'm going X minus X quantity squared, and then I'm going to go y minus 1 quantity squared. All right, now we're going to try to mosey through and simplify this expression the best we can. Uh, if I do the 
first half I get x squared and then the second half I'm going to foil and get y squared minus 10y plus 25 extend my radical uh, these cancel out and let's see I'll foil that guy and get y squared minus 2y plus 1 as now my goal here is I'm going to try to solve for y that's my goal okay solving for y so what I'm going to do is try to cancel the radicals in order to do that I'm going to square both sides and I get x squared plus y squared minus 10y plus 25 equals y squared minus 2y plus 1 and I want to try to subtract the y squareds move in other words move this term over to the other side and what you're going to notice is that these y squareds cancel and you get x squared minus 10y plus 25 equals negative 2y plus 1. Let's put another asterisk here in our notebook that says the y squareds should cancel every single time. If the y squareds do not cancel, then we definitely did something wrong earlier. All right, now from there, what could I do next? Um, let's, I'm going to add 10y to both sides and then I'm going to simultaneously subtract 1 from both sides. And that's going to give me x squared plus 24 equals 8y. And last but not least, I'm going to divide both sides by 8. And now there's a variety of ways you could express this. You could say x squared divided by 8 plus 3 equals y. And of course, where did the 3 come from? Well, that was 24 divided by 8. Um, or you could say 1 eighth x squared plus 3. These are all equivalent and equally good. Um, so I think, in my opinion, we've tackled the hardest one, uh, but we're going to see different twists and turns on this type of question that we've seen in past regions exams. And so here we go. The directrix of uh, this given parabola right here has an equation y equals 4. So I'm going to go ahead and draw y equals 4. And they want you to find the coordinates of the focus. Now, typically what happens is there's three, three characteristics of the parabola um, that we like to focus on. There's the directrix, there's the focus, and then there's the vertex. And out of those three, they should always give you two. They may not always be as obvious, but they should give you two so that you can find the third one, typically. And they definitely um, gave me the directrix, okay? So, and they want me to find the focus. So the question is, did they really give me the vertex? Did they give me the vertex? Well, it's kind of disguised. So within this equation, we want to find the vertex. And so I'm going to try to solve for y. You could foil out the right side, but it's unnecessary. What I'm going to do first is I'm going to divide both sides by 8. Um, so let me, I'll just recopy it to start with. We got y plus 4 equals x plus 6 squared. So I'm going to divide both sides of the equation by 8, thus canceling those. And so I have y plus 4 equals 1 eighth times the quantity x plus 6 squared. And then last but not least, I'm going to subtract the 4 over. Okay. Now, if you're not super comfortable with vertical shifting and horizontal shifting, you could always graph this equation on your calculator and identify the relative min, a.k.a. the vertex, on the calculator. But really what you have is we know the vertex is going to be negative 6 and negative 4 because um, we're going left 6 here and down 4 there. Now, it gets a little tricky, so try to visualize on your graph. Let's go left 6, down 4. All right, so I'm going to put a point right here, and that's the vertex. And the distance between the directrix and your vertex appears to be 8 units. So you need to go another 8 units to get to your focus. So I believe the focus is going to be at negative 6, and I had to go down another 8, so I think it's going to be negative 12 are the coordinates of this point right here that kind of went off my graph paper. But again, here's the trick. If you have 8 units here, you need to go another 8 units because the vertex is supposed to be halfway between the directrix and the focus. Almost a virtually identical, but I just gave it two little tweaks, and I want to show you just a slight difference in this problem. The first tweak that I made was I put a minus sign here, 
And then the other tweak was I changed the directrix. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to graph my directrix right here at y equals 8. And then again, I'm going to take this equation, I'm going to solve for y, and we'll do it a little bit faster this time. I divide both sides by 8, which gave me 1 eighth times the quantity x plus 6 squared. And then I add the 4 over. So now I guess the question is, where is your vertex this time? Your vertex, now remember, we're going left 6 and then up 4. So the vertex is going to be at negative 6 comma positive 4, which is going to put me right here. Now, and that's the vertex. Now in this case, where would the focus be? I think, again, what you, if you remember, the parabola is always going to open away from the directrix. So this is a downward facing parabola. And let's see, if the distance from there to there is four units, I need to go another four units, which is going to put my focus right here. And we'll say the focus is at negative six comma zero. So that one was a little bit easier to see because it actually fit on my graph paper. Now I think we're going to finish with the easiest one perhaps, so hopefully uh, we'll see if you agree with me. It's just the wording. So they said, which equation, and this is going to be multiple choice, and down here is, uh, I'll move the screen so that we can see all four of the choices. Which equation represents the set of all points equidistant from line L, which is going to be this red line right here, and point R? Okay, uh, shown in the graph below. So think of point R as your focus. Think of line L as your directrix, okay? And we're looking for the set of all points equidistant between the two, aka parabola. So hopefully when you were reading this question and you saw the phrase equidistant, you were thinking parabola. Equidistant is all about parabolas. So let's try to draw this parabola, maybe. Uh, I know the vertex is going to be right here because that's the halfway point. Okay. And because uh, remember, that was three units there, and this is another three units of separation there. Now we just have to pick out the correct choice. Now notice, what would the coordinates be of that vertex? So we have proven that the vertex has to be at looks like negative 2, negative 1. Alright, now we could do what we did in the first example where we use the distance formula twice, you know, we go distance from here to here, and then distance from here to here, that type of thing, and set the two equal to each other. That's, that would definitely, definitely, definitely work, and we'll consider that our backup plan. There is a shortcut, though, based on the friendliness of these choices. Now you'll notice they all have a coefficient of negative 1 12. Now since they all have that, then I'm sure that's correct and I don't have to test it or prove it. What I'm going to do is focus on my shifts. Choice number one goes to the right two down one. That's close, but I don't want to go to the right two. I want to go to the left two. Okay. Choice number two goes left two up one. Both of those are backwards. I don't want to go to the right. I want to go left, and I don't want to go up. I want to go down. Okay, check this one out. Left two down one. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. And of course, you could always graph this equation on your calculator to see if it gives you a similar looking picture as what we've drawn here in our grid. Again, emphasizing the value of how important it is to try to sketch all of these, regardless of whether they give us a piece of graph paper or not. Uh, before I let you go, I want to give a big thanks to Bob again for getting us started while I was out. And I hope you guys have a great night. We'll see you tomorrow.